All right, we're going to go ahead and get this started. We're going to open it up with Bill Landis from The Athletic with Nathan Baird on deck. Bill? Oh, sorry, can you guys hear me? Yes, we, we can. Got Bill. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Hey, um, hey Gene, uh, thanks for doing this. Um, I mean, there's a lot to get to. I, I guess I'll start with maybe the, the Oregon series and, and what the future of that might be now that you move to this and if you've had any discussions with them about how to move forward with, with those two games. Yeah, I've talked to all three of uh, our non-conference uh, opponent athletic directors, including Oregon, of course, and uh, we've agreed to talk in the future you know, to see if uh, we can try and, and reschedule our contest. Does that mean that you're not going to play next year? Is it too soon to know whether uh, the Oregon game I'm talking about? Is it too soon to know an answer on that? Yes, I'm sorry, Bill. It's too early to know that. Uh, we didn't get into detail, so uh, he and I will probably chat next week. Uh, so, you know, I called the uh, three athletic directors today um, in uh, market at Buffalo and Bob at Bowling Green and Rob at Oregon and, and shared with them our, what our announcement would be. Uh, they're all going through similar conversations in their league, so they were totally understanding. Uh, but I shared with them that uh, I would call next week and, and see if we could try and reschedule. So uh, Rob and I at Oregon did not get into any, any details. Sorry, Bill. All right, thank you. Okay, again, folks, uh, hit star six to unmute yourself. Next up, Nathan Baird with Cleveland.com and Dan Hope on deck. Nathan? Thanks, Gene. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about where the athletic budget stands right now and what cuts you may have had to make? And I guess if the Bowling Green and Buffalo payouts, if, if those are not on the books for this next fiscal year, does that help give you any further easing on cuts you might have to make for this next fiscal year? So we, we've already uh, made some adjustments in our budget, and we're working off of a uh, two-month budget that was a, just like the rest of the university that was approved by the trustees. And so we have been pretty fluid with this. And um, as we get uh, more understanding of what our future looks like relative to all of our events, uh, we'll be more definitive with our budget. Uh, but at this point in time, uh, Nathan, we, we haven't made final decisions. And uh, relative to uh, the payouts, uh, again, uh, I'll talk to them next week, and we'll determine what uh, we have to do or, or not do. So I can't get into that at this point in time. Next up, Dan Hope from 11 Warriors with Bill Rabinowitz on deck. Dan? Hey, Gene, you guys obviously made the decision yesterday to shut down uh, voluntary workouts for the time being. Uh, now you're making this move. Just what's your level of optimism or concern right now about Ohio State actually being able to proceed forward with playing fall sports? Well, I'm really concerned. I mean, that's a great question. That is the question of the day. I mean, I, uh, I am uh, very concerned. I think in our last conversation, I, uh, whatever that was, I was, you know, cautiously optimistic. Um, you know, I'm not even there now. And when you look at uh, the behavior uh, of our country, uh, and you consider that in May uh, we were on a downward trajectory uh, with cases and, and our hospitals were uh, creating opportunities for people to come back and, and get the care that they needed beyond COVID and um, elective surgeries and things of that nature. And um, now um, we're, um, if not the worst in the world, one of the worst in the world. And uh, Franklin County is, is uh, at a level three, um, uh, on a trajectory towards level four. Um, so I, um, uh, I am, I am concerned um, that we may not be able to play, uh, which is why we took the measure that we took in order to try and, and have September available to us for conference games and, and give us the flexibility and control uh, to handle disruptions 
uh, if we're able to start a season. So um, I'm, I'm concerned about uh, where we are um, uh, just to, just across the board relative to the management of the pandemic uh, as individuals. Um, I think our governor has done a phenomenal job. Um, he, you know, he had us on a great trajectory downward, and and as we uh, just didn't respond to our uh, opportunities uh, that were provided to us. And so, you know, it's it's people need to to follow the protocols and give our kids a chance to to compete. What do you feel like has to happen over the next two months to get to a point? where football games and other fall sports can be played? Well, I think, one, first and foremost, we're going to follow the lead of our, our medical experts. Uh, their advice has, has been um, great for us as we've moved through this process. And, and uh, the health and safety of our student-athletes is first and foremost. And so we, we're going to continue to follow their lead. Um, obviously, uh, we need... Uh, the, the virus to, to be managed differently uh, than it is now because um, we're, uh, we're we're at a spike again. So we, we need that. And so uh, at this point in time, we're, we're wait and see and uh, take the advice of our, our, our medical experts from the Big Ten Medical Task Force. And then off, obviously, our, we're blessed with, with great medical advice here locally. Uh, as are uh, the other schools, 13 of our 14 schools have medical centers. Uh, so we have access to uh, tremendous advice. Uh, so we'll just have to wait and see how our, our different environments manage the pandemic and, and take their advice as we move forward. Thank you, Gene. Next up, Bill Rabinowitz with the Columbus Dispatch with Ari Wasserman on deck. Bill? I think he is. We'll, we'll go ahead and we'll move on to Ari Wasserman from The Athletic with Heather Dinich on deck. Ari? Hey, Gene. Um, in order to um, play a season this year, does there have to be an acceptance um, for people at your level that this, this virus is going to spread at least some and to have the ability to endure that? Or what, like, what's the expectation of how this is managed from um, a team level for this to be manageable for, for a season to happen? Does that make sense? Yeah, and, and I don't know if Ari, I can really answer that one uh, because we're still learning as we go along. Um, and, you know, we haven't, um, you know, begun to engage in, um, you know, true practice. And so uh, those protocols are being developed uh, by our uh, Big Ten uh, Task Force for Emerging, Emerging Infectious Diseases and then uh, our sports medicine group. And uh, we'll probably have some guidance from uh, the NCAA committee on uh, medical safeguards. Uh, so uh, we, we don't have that information yet, but we will get that. Uh, I think we all know that July 24th is when we can actually start uh, that based upon the current schedule. Uh, so, uh, you know, we, we just have to wait and see um, and determine if we can actually uh, hold practice and ultimately contest the way we need to to protect the kids and um, there's there's probably to your point uh, gonna have to be some level of acceptance but how do you mitigate that don't know that's what we got to rely on the experts thank you for doing this gene no problem Ari. Uh, let me hearing while we you know Ari just reminded me let me apologize to everybody that texted me or called me and i wasn't able to respond i think you guys know i it's hard for me not to respond, and I just wanted to hold true to uh, uh, our commitment to my colleagues in the league and uh, my commissioner, and uh, just wanted to hold true to that until I had this opportunity right here. So I apologize that I wasn't responsive to all of you like uh, I would want to be. So sorry. Thank you, Gene. Well, we're going to go back to Bill Rabinowitz. Uh, the drone is gone at uh, Mirrorfield. So, Bill Rabinowitz from the Columbus Dispatch with Heather Dinich on deck. Bill? Bill's probably. 
starting on 18, I guarantee you. He's trying to hit it high and have the ball roll back. Goodness gracious. Okay, Heather Dinich from ESPN.com. You, you available, available, Heather? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me, Gene? Yeah, I got you, Heather. Okay. Uh, how much consideration is being given to um, front-loading the schedule with division games? And, you know, when you guys might determine a decision on that and, and how you – how you determine a champion? Would you do just winning percentage? What are the discussions around all those things? Yeah, you know, we haven't gotten into those level of, that level of detail, uh, Heather. We have created that list, uh, so that is a, a talking point that we have to have as they and coaches, and you know, whatever number of games, how many uh, we have, and then you know, do we front load the vision or do we spread it out? We we got to go through all that um, and, t- and talk about a championship. Um, we have not delved deep into those details yet. Uh, we've had preliminary conversations, but we we haven't gone there to, to the point where I could actually definitively answer that question. And I was just and curious. I, that, I, no, go ahead. Next week they're doing that. You said next week they're doing that? Yeah. I anticipate next week we'll get into the details of, of how our schedules will work. I, I was also curious as to what – is there anything that you can share as far as the timing of doing this now, collectively as a league? Yeah, you know, we, we wanted, we, we came to a, it was kind of an interesting, we kind of talked about a number of different things over time. Uh, keep in mind, since uh, we've all been shut down, uh, we've been fortunate uh, to have the leadership that we have, and we've been uh, having conference calls as, as athletic directors uh, from the time we left uh, uh, the tournament in Chicago in basketball. Uh, first, we started out seven days a week, and then we uh, went into five days a week, and we've been doing that. And a lot of our discussions, obviously, early on was about you know, the virus and what we could do in the summertime, the NCAA rules, and things of that nature, spring sports. And we finally got to a point where we could start talking about, realistically, can we have a football season? And we talked about uh, different scenarios and that everybody else is talking about. And uh, we, we, it kind of came naturally um, as we talked about our planning principles, health and safety of our student athletes, first and foremost, uh, flexibility and control. You know, we, we, with our conference game, uh, being able to move up into September uh, allows us the ability great flexibility and handle disruptions, uh, aligning with our academic calendars. We had to wait and find out what are our schools and the leagues going to do. Are they going to have in-person classes? Or are they going to have a hybrid program? What are they going to start? What are they going to end? And, and we're aligned mostly with uh, the academic calendars. Uh, where you know, a lot of our schools are, are shutting down in-person prior to Thanksgiving. And as you know, we typically have a, a home game or away game right after Thanksgiving. So now we, we have the ability to say to ourselves, you know, we got set September 5th available. Uh, we got it available. So now we can say to ourselves, okay, how do we want to play? Uh, so it kind of came naturally, Heather, if we could talk about different scenarios and uh, we just felt that by playing our conference games, have, flex, have September available to us, um, gave us flexibility, control, we can handle, we can be nimble, uh, we can adjust. So that, that's how it came to us. Thank you. Next up, Austin Ward from Letterman Row with Joey Kaufman on deck. Austin? <laughs> Star Six, Austin, are you there? Uh, what about you, Joey Coffin? Are, are you available? <laughs> Gary, can you hear me? Yeah, now we can. Yeah. Great. Uh, Gene, uh, can you maybe explain a little more on, on, on how the conference came to a decision that playing only conference games will be significant, um, will be significantly safer or, or just safer in general than playing non-conference games, like what are some of the things that would make it safer? Well, I don't know if it would make it uh, 
you know, I, I, I trust that our our colleagues um, that we would compete against in the non-conference would have safety and, and the health of their student-athletes uh, at the top of their priority list, just like we are. I think from a, you know, the main thing for us, uh, from a health and safety point of view, uh, was we, we do know uh, that we, we are familiar with uh, the hotels, we're familiar with um, uh, the visiting team locker rooms, we're familiar with operations, all those type of things so we can put in place standardized protocols that we all adhere to. Uh, but, you know, that, that could be true for our non-conference opponents as well. So it's not like a, a major issue around that. Uh, biggest thing for us was just the, the opportunity to have September and create the flex, uh, flexibility. And if, if, if we're able to play in September and uh, – Something occurs in late September or early October, uh, we can pause. We can hit the pause button and, and provide a window of opportunity for student athletes to not be put at risk. Uh, we can move games. Um, you know, if for a particular environment, um, if we're scheduled to play somewhere else and an outbreak occurs in that environment, we can, you know, that that school has to shut down. Then you know, we can change games. So, we, you know, there, there's a flexibility. I can't uh, say that enough. Um, it, it's significant. And, you know, to your point around health and safety, it, it just gives us that ability to say, you know what, um, you know, it's not safe here in Franklin County. Um, so, you know, Illinois can't come here. So what does that mean? Um, we'll have the ability to address that. Next up, we're going to go back to Austin Ward from Letterman Row with Lane Higgins on deck. Austin? Sorry about that, Gene. No problem, Austin. I thought you were having a beer somewhere at your field. That's all right. Uh, maybe when we're done here. Um, when, <laughs> when you talk about this flexibility and the, the chances that stuff could move to September or later, like I know that there's no definitive schedule that you could put out or that everyone can agree on right now. If you guys sit down next week and have to come up with a proposal, what do you think is realistic in terms of number and trying to decide which opponents you could play? Because I don't think you can just make it up week by week once you get to September, right? Well, no, we'll so we'll we'll probably uh, look at what we currently have scheduled um, and consider those contests and whether or not we could retain those. Obviously, the dates would change. Um, and then we, you know, would have to determine some, some principles around the earlier question about East versus West divisions and, and, and how we want to structure that. Um, but we, we have a, um, you know, a scheduler in the Big Ten, and, and we'll, we'll talk about our, our planning principles, and, and we'll schedule games. And, and you know, obviously, um, the situation from a competitive equity point of view, everybody won't be happy. Um, but the reality is you get a chance to co compete and, and allow your kids a chance to play. So we have to set aside to some degree um, competitive equity. Um, so um, I don't see a challenge with scheduling the games. Um, you know, we, we have to determine how many. Uh, we have to determine the, the divisional issues like uh, was raised earlier and how we want to deal with that. We have to determine how many games we want to pre-schedule. Um, it may be that we don't pre-schedule X. Well, we only we only pre-schedule X number of games and, and hold others in advance. But we, we just have to understand that the, the virus uh, is, is going to exist, and, and so we got to. That's the that's the beauty of having September 5th available or week zero is, is available now that the NCAA has approved that. So. Uh, all those things uh, give us uh, the ability to, I think, uh, to uh, schedule games, and, and, and we'll just have to figure out what our planning principles are. And the other, the other concern that you had raised back in May when you talked about this being a possibility was trying to get every league to agree on the amount of games and how that would impact like playoff, you know, requirements and, and making that field. 
are those conversations going on simultaneously, or is this just step one? Step one, and uh, that's no longer a concern of mine. And, you know, I've shifted uh, my priorities of concerns, and uh, as, we, as, we, as I've learned more about the virus, um, I've shifted my priority of concerns as it uh, relates to uh, what other leagues are doing uh, in postseason, to be quite frank. Um, you know, I, I just want to give our kids a chance to play. Uh, you guys know this, and it's, you know, it's, it's for all the fall sports. You know, we have a number of athletes that, who have an opportunity to uh, have future um, careers or future opportunities in their sports post-graduation or, or post this season. And I want to give them that chance. And, and um, so I, I'm i more concerned about the regular season right now. And uh, if we're blessed to have a postseason, whatever that looks like, great. Uh, but right now, I, I just, I would love to have, you know, Wyatt Davis and Josh Myers uh, to have a chance to, to have a season. And so um, uh, that, that, that was a concern of mine at the beginning, but it's no longer a concern. Regular season's not concerned. Okay. Thanks for your time, Gene. Next up is, is Lane Higgins from the Wall Street Journal with Tony Gerdman on deck. Lane? Hey there. I think I accidentally reviewed myself just there, um, but you know, thank you for making the time for this. And I guess the main question that I had after all of the ones that have already been asked is that, given this NCAA-defined six-week period of kind of ramping up practices before the first game, is it likely then that we'll see games in week zero or on September fifth? Given that that six-week period is you know, fast upon us, or should we expect that maybe we're not going to see conference games until later in September? Well, that's a great question. You know, that, that's, the, that's the thing. That's another issue we'll have to talk about uh, when we get into this. Uh, you know, you, you, you hit on it. You know, the flexibility of starting week zero, uh, week one, or week two, um, based upon whatever the virus does. But we have to make that decision in a timely fashion because we would have to push back that six-week window. So to your point, great question. If we decided that we're going to start September 12th or whatever that third week is, um, or yeah, third week, third week, zero, one, mm -hmm. two, we would have to push back our six-week window. And so, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and, or ask for relief. You know, that's one of the things that uh, the Football Oversight Committee has done and the NCAA Council has done. Uh, they've been uh, very uh, flexible uh, in understanding uh, these tough decisions and, and uh, the fluidity of these decisions. And so you, you, I, would, I would think if we needed some help there, we would get it. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, you, you hit on the question. That's a very good question. Thank you. And thanks for making the time. Next up, Tony Gerdman, now representing Buckeye Scoop, with Rob Oller on deck. Tony? Hey, Gene, there's been speculation about 10 conference games, and I know you haven't gotten into all of that yet. Would you be in favor of trying to have 10 conference games this year? Oh, well, sure. Yeah, we talked about that, and that's a possibility. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful that that's where we end up. Uh, next week and locking that down. Uh, we've talked about that. That's our preference. Um, but yeah, I, that would be that would be a good scenario of pre-scheduling. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see. And then, when, uh, in terms of a date, should we expect the conference schedule to be set, even if it's just pre-scheduling, you know, six games or whatever? Yeah, I don't have that crystal ball. That's a good one. You know, I, I don't. You know, we have 14 institutions, so, you know, I would hope we could do it tomorrow, but that's not realistic. So I, I can't give you a date. I'm sorry. <laughs> like two weeks, one week? Uh, I, I wouldn't make that speculation. I really couldn't. All right, thanks. It would have, to be, it would have to be fast, you know, not because of really what Lane said, that great question that she asked. Uh, because we have to take into consideration uh, July, I think it's 24th. Uh, we have to take into consideration uh, 
team organized activities and whether we push that back or not. So um, you know, I'm hopeful soon. Next up, Rob Aller from the Dispatch with Tim May on deck. Rob? Dean, can you hear me? Yep, I got you, Rob. Thank you. Okay. Uh, by the way, I'm at near field and Bill missed the putt. In fact, he missed it twice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, hey, of course you did. Uh, but... Oh, no. I hit the 30 footer. Um, fans in the stadium, where do we stand on that? That hasn't been discussed yet, and I don't know. Yeah, uh, maybe that's maybe that's back burner. Although I, I doubt it. Where do you stand, and is there what's the deadline for that? Yeah, you know we that get that has a little bit more time, a little bit more flexibility uh, than the schedule issue. But you know I um uh, you know based upon where we are, Rob. I mean I I think we're gonna end up with the uh, CDC requirement of six feet. Um, so that takes our, our Stadium capacity down significantly, and we'll begin to work on that. Um, I, that hasn't been a priority at this point in time, but uh, we'll we'll get to that, and we'll take the advice of, of our medical people. But you know, when you when you just watch the behavior, and, and you watch the fact that we're spiking, and you watch our, our governors fighting to help us help ourselves, and and um, you know we're we're not in a good place, and so I I would have a hard time. Uh, not, but do, do, I have a hard time doing something different than the CDC guidelines. And if we're able to have fans in the state, because that's a real possibility. You know, two months ago, I, you know, again, I was optimistic, and cautiously optimistic, uh, but I, I've lost that. So to me, um, you know, if we have fans in the stands, it will be CDC guidelines, and we just have to figure out what those numbers are. But a lot less than have you than what I thought. When you say, because I think you mentioned originally 20 and then said maybe up to 50, uh, which of those that you thought you think it's closer to 20, maybe 10? Yeah, yeah, it's closer to closer in that area. Um, I, you know, I, I shouldn't. I need to wait for my ticket manager to do his okay. work, but certainly in that area. Okay, a couple other things. I know that uh, if, at one time spring fall. I want to reiterate that. If, if, I want to reiterate if we have fans in the stands. I mean, I just want to. I want to everybody to be realistic here because uh, that that's sure. a real concern. Okay, another thing. At, at one point, spring football. Hey, Rob, I got it. It's got to be quick, Rob. Please. All right, spring football. Plan B, Plan C, Plan D. Where are you on the spring, on having a spring football season instead? Yeah, we haven't talked about that in a great detail. We decided to leave that on the table. Our focus, Rob, was to, to get on to the fall, focus on the fall. And, and obviously, if, if things don't happen for the fall, then we need to, to think about the spring. But right now, that's, that's not a high priority for us. Thanks. Next up, for a couple quickies, Tim May from Letterman Row with Bill Rabinowitz on deck. Tim? Got you, Tim. Tim? Julie, can you hear me? Yes, now we can, yes. Okay. Uh, Gene, uh, how much talk has there been with the networks, et cetera? How, how flexible have they been on, about this, et cetera? And what are sort of y'all's obligations as far as, like, the contracts go with them? Yeah. Uh, uh, Kevin Warren, our commissioner, has been having ongoing conversations with our partners, and I really can't address that, Tim. That'd be a good, great question for him, uh, but he's been having conversations with, with them. And the other thing is, do you get the idea that July 24th has got to get pushed back just from the people you're talking to, NCAA, your colleagues in the Big Ten, et cetera? What, what is your sense of July 24th actually uh, being that state when y'all can kind of get things going? You know, it's so it's so weird because you literally have to go day by day, week by week. So you know, we gotta see where things go next week um, across the country and, and locally, uh, and, and uh, then we and then we to have to make a decision on you know what week we're gonna start uh, relative to contests. And uh, so we there's a couple of variables in there, but uh, it's too difficult for me to speculate at this point in time, Tim. 
my last quickie, uh, is the idea of the, being flexible with games, maybe even have to postpone or cancel games. Uh, are y'all are y'all going to come to consensus of what are the parameters that would force that to happen? Like, for example, you could have four cases of COVID on your team suddenly, but if all four of them are your quarterbacks, you know what I mean? I mean, is it? Are y'all going to discuss what would constitute, uh, or have y'all already discussed what would constitute the uh, grounds for postponing a game? Yeah, we, we we know we have to do that, and we're going to delve into that. Uh, with no question. Yeah, we'll we'll have to create those parameters and and under in a process uh, by which uh, the 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 approval is, is made uh, through the conference office. Yeah. So yes, definitely. Thanks, man. All right, we've got time for one last question, and we're going to go back to uh, out to Mirfield. Uh, Bill Rabinowitz with the dispatch. Bill. Oh, for the third time, is it Charm Jean? Uh, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, I got you, Bill. Okay, okay. Uh, obviously, this is a devastating hit financially for athletic programs in 2020. Um, but how devastating is this going to be long term? I mean, this has been, in some ways, a golden era for college sports with a lot of spending. Uh, how different is the landscape going to be as a result of this? Well, that's, that's a great question, Bill. We have to do some work uh, on our budget. we got a lot of work to do and, um, as we ultimately make some decisions. But, you know, I think there's some, some new behaviors that are, are going to be in play here as we move forward. And, and it's just kind of like what we're all experiencing now. You know, we all have these new virtual tools that we're using and probably will continue to use as we move forward. Uh, but also relative to you know, the, the, just the management of expenditures for uh, different things, I think, will change across the country. Um, you know, there's there's different cost containment committees across the country that have emerged, and, and ideas will come out of that. Some of us old school guys have some, some ideas around how uh, we should do things around NCAA championships differently um, and have ha always had those ideas, and now we might have a chance to do that. Uh, so I, I think you're right, Bill. I think that uh, uh, when we're able to get to a point to objectively and reasonably look at those things, um, I think some of those changes will occur. Uh, right now, it's very difficult to do uh, because we're all uh, kind of locked into the challenge of positioning ourselves to make leadership-type decisions uh, in the present. And so I, I think you're right. Uh, but it's very difficult to look down the road uh, when you have COVID and social injustice issues and, and NIL uh, looming. And so uh, there's a number of things that are we're just kind of drinking water through a fire hose at this point. And you touched on this uh, when asked earlier a little bit, but how much discussion has there been? We saw what Stanford did yesterday with cutting sports. Uh, how much do you want to resist that? Is that realistic that you can get away with not having to cut sports? At this point in time, we're we're uh, we're avoiding that. Okay. What about pay cuts for coaches? Same. <laughs> Great. Gene, thank you so much for your time. I know we went a little bit over. Uh, again, appreciate your time so much. And uh, all right. Media... Sorry. Go ahead, Gene. I'm sorry. Yeah. I was just gonna say, no problem. Thank you, everybody, for your patience and understanding, and uh, appreciate all your hard work. And stay safe, please. Great. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks for being on. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks, Jerry.